We live, baby. Podcast. I call it up now. From way up. Uh. Want a duck boat? Get your cake up. What you do? We head, head, make up. We play with Benelli. No Sega. Chasing all green. Dust and paper. I'm always in the game. Real player. Four wheel trucks. And speakers. I never buy for it. Only pick up. All right. I'm a real deal. 24 7. Big Dog Energy Podcast. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> yeah, there. That's it. That's hey, it. That's you know it. Do. You know I do. Man, what's up, y'all? Hey, we back. We back. Podcast is back. We live on Instagram. If you're listening, there or we gonna post this right here. Hey, it's D Moore right here. Arbor right here. Twenty four seven hunt. You got your boy Moo Boo Moody. Ricky Nicholas, Lafayette, Louisiana. What's Glizzy? Hey man, where Lafayette at? Man, that's all the way at the bottom, right in the middle, on the water line. Y'all got food down there? We got food. Ask me who got ducks. Ooh. I'll Arkansas. tell you who got ducks, house, because hey, <laughs> I don't want no more Georgia, people. Georgia got what ducks? We kept that as a duck. We got more ju- ducks in, 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 in Georgia than y'all got in Louisiana. Yep. Boy, man. you about to get all kind of comments <laughs> in the comment section that you are not prepared man, for. <laughs> they said they can't kill ducks in Louisiana. <clears throat> Louisiana got some of the hardest duck hunters in the country. Who? Louisiana. Since when? You never the beginning been. of the time. Louisiana Purchase. You never been to Georgia. They hard, but like like Louisiana boys are hard. Oh, we got hardcore duck hunters in Georgia. Yeah. We got face paint. Face paint. The, the duck hunters. The in two thousand of y'all Bro, that I, do hunt, they do hunt hard as you know, you know what I'm saying? But the hunt, two hunt, million in Louisiana? Oh. Uh, a hunt in Georgia only lasts thirty minutes. Exactly, bro. Hey, that's we all at Waffle House. That's <laughs> all you need. We at Waffle House. All star me. Yep. And I put hot sauce on my pork chop. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey man, we're gonna get it started, bro. Um, welcome to Twenty Four Hunt Big Duck Podcast, bro. Um, this man can't. Oh, he said. Twenty Four Hunt. <laughs> 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 Look, I was gonna, I was gonna let it ride, but I was like, we all each other like this man just messed that all hey, up. Man. Yeah. Welcome to the two to four seven hump yeah, big man. duck what podcast. Kind of, what kind of but Rick, you gotta hype hey, this man. up, bro. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> take my job. Welcome to the two to four seven hump big yeah. energy duck podcast. You know what it is? We here every week, staying in live and tune. It's gonna be on all platforms. We hate. We here. We gonna talk ducks. We talking boats. We talking trucks. We talking about whatever. So you better be here. You better be tuned in, and you better stay live because we gonna live. stay lit. Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. There, you ready for radio, house? Hey, hey. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Man, what the, he was 97.9. Where we going tonight with this with this well, with this combo? Where, where we need to go, bro. When I thought about it, when we did the first version two of version uh first episode of the podcast, I realized that we got a lot of new followers. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the stuff that we covered two and a half years ago, man, like gotta get updated. So um I think the very first question that a lot of people have is they want to know exactly where we're from. Um and probably how we all got started, and they probably want to know how we linked up. So Let's run through it. I'll let you take the point on that. Well, this is uh, Renard Moody here. Uh, I am from Macon, Georgia, the big 478, middle Georgia, the heart of Georgia. Um, Yeah, been hunting for since I was young. Started with my pops. Um, My passion for waterfowl grew as I got older. Um, You know, and I I finally got a dog. Uh, His name's Pete. We've had him since, I don't know, he's like nine years old, so I had him since a puppy. So as he got older and better, my passion grew and grew more. So here we are, you know what I'm saying? I met Daryl, Ricky, Aubrey, and some more guys, and uh been rolling with them ever since. I ain't going to get too deep into it. I let them boys get into it, but that's my story <clears throat> as a quick little intro. Yep, I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana. Again, my name's Ricky Nicholas for y'all that don't know. Uh, at Ricky underscore eight underscore on IG, a Rick on TikTok. Um, hey man, we need to ask you on the social media. <laughs> they need to know, bro. They need to know. Like, TV's boring. You gotta have Rick, look your name stuff. up, man. <laughs> so, anyway, I am from Lafayette, Louisiana. I was born in Houston, but my family's originally from Louisiana. And I grew up a deer hunter. My dad got me into it, shot my first rabbit when I was four, didn't even know what a duck was. Um, in the military, came back from Iraq, and I swapped hunts with this guy, and he was a duck hunter, I was a deer hunter, and I just kind of been locked in ever since. Started duck hunting in 2006. Uh, in 2014, I started an organization called Blood Deep Outdoors, and started to really like lock in on Instagram, and that's really where I found Daryl Moore. Um, I knew he was an Arkansas boy, I knew he was hunting 60 day seasons, he was a college kid at the time. So I hit Daryl up on Instagram. Was like, "Hey, bro, I'm trying to kill some some ducks, man. Let's like let's let's do this." 
And Daryl at the time, college kid, 60 day season, he's like, hop in, bro, let's go. <clears throat> Met him at a Sonic, we went hunting. It's been locked in ever since. Um, so I hunted with Daryl probably three or four years. And then Daryl introduced me to Renard. Um, and then we kind of linked up and started hunting together. But that's kind of my abbreviated backstory, D. Well, my key my sheep short sweet, you know I'm Demo from Arkansas. You know what it is, the capital of the world. You know what I do? I kill mallards in the face, in the timber. That's what I do. That's who I am. I've expanded my horizon the past couple of years. Now I travel the country and I kill mallards because that's what I love to do because I'm no longer a broke college kid. Hey, so that's how I'm going to keep it short. That's what you need to know about me. You look at my Instagram, you'll see the same thing. I like kill ducks, I like catch fish, I like play golf. Hey, that's all you need to know. Well, since you want to keep it <coughs> nice and short and sweet, I guess I'm going to keep it nice and sweet. Hey, it's your boy, Aubrey Matt. Trap of the year four times in the row. As you already know, by me, uh, you know, I'm a bird hunter. I kill every bird that you can think of, whether it comes from doves, quail, ducks, pheasant, tweety birds, no <laughs> birds, birds in general. That's me. I love dogs. I work dogs. Help my homies. And we kill ducks. That's what yep. you can do about me. D, where did... How do you and Renard me? Because I knew you back from 2013, probably. Um, when at what point did Renard come in the picture? <clears throat> so uh, I met Moody uh, on Instagram. It was like probably 20, I don't know, 15, maybe 14. I think it was 2014 summer. Some summer. Yeah, I think it was like, it was like a there. summertime. He hit me up. Really, he hit up a big group of people. Uh, it was a big Instagram message. <clears throat> Not a big one, but it was probably like seven people. Dang, I would. I, let me take my phone. Bro, you was definitely in that message. <laughs> you was in there. You was in there. You was in there. We ain't going to go about what you asked me after he sent this message. So he's, he sent that message, <clears throat> and I feel like everybody kind of like, nobody really locked in. You know what I'm saying? And then I hit him up. We started, we talked a little bit, texted all summer, and then it came like first split of duck season. I was beating him down, and uh, I was trying to get him to come hunt, and uh, he was in Arkansas, actually. And I'm sending him pictures every day, bro. You better come on, man. You better meet me here. <laughs> it's It's right. But he had other <clears throat> some people with him and stuff like that. You know how that is when you got people with you. Yeah. You know, you can't go home with just anybody. And uh, he was like, man, I had to catch you next time. I think it was like three more days of me sending pictures. He was like, man, next time I'm there, we hunting. <laughs> and I don't think, I think it was like maybe the end of the year. We like finally, was like, <clears throat> he's like, I'm back in Arkansas. And we ended up hunting. And uh, man, we just start hunting from then on out. And uh, I don't even know, we ain't been on very many hunts where we ain't been with each other. Probably that's, maybe that's, that's fact. This is probably the first time this year actually in like three four years. This many hunts missed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah. Where we ain't hunt. When we we always hunt, uh, but it's usually like one of us got something to do or some you know like. But a, saying that we've hunted more this year than we have any other year. Yeah, we start. We've been well, we started in what October? Yeah, September. No, September. September. We started September. Labor Day weekend on what? Dove. Yeah, yeah. and so, then Texas till, and then more Dove. It's been every weekend since. Just about. We're going all the way through February. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, where did Arbor come from? I know I've met you personally on my end on the quail hunt in 2019? 19, 19 yeah. Okay. 2019. And on the quail hunt, who is this country dude with these mm. bird dogs? Bird dog, bird dog. Man, Aubrey, uh, me and Aubrey from around the same area. He's from Warner Robins. I'm from Macon. Okay. And so just growing up, we know you know mutual people. And it ain't many black dudes in Macon and Warner Robins that kind of share the same interests that we do. And so naturally, you just going to kind of, you know, know about each other. And I yeah. mean, you just going to hang around some of the same people, you know what I mean? Right. Have, you know, common interests and stuff like that. So, and uh, man, you know, in Georgia, everybody would, most of the people would duck hunt. And I mean, I have, you know, I always have wood ducks back home. And I've had some wood ducks at, at my property uh, this one time. And Man, it was just a rough place to get to. So my pops, uh, he wasn't going to get down in that swamp with me. I mean, it was it was, it was kind of rough. It was like a, I don't know, what you saying? I was like a 20-foot straight down. 20-foot? Into a swamp. <laughs> Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about this swamp. This drop-off, I will not even say cliff, drop-off, every bit of 200 foot. It was so steep, we had to tie a rope to an oak tree to go down. And he didn't even tell me about it. He said, man, I got this little duck hole. Uh, well, I actually take that back. He said, I got this duck hole, and I got a, we can spot, I spot on the creek, and we can go hunt. I said, all right, cool. So the first day we go, we go to the creek, we sit in there, and this was, this was when Pete was young. Pete was like, what, two, one? I don't even know. He think he was like one, one years old back yeah, then. Yeah, he was young. And then a lot of y'all don't know about Polo, but Polo was that man back in the day. Y'all probably seen him back in the day, but I still got pictures of Polo on Twitter. <laughs> but 
Polo, it was my first time really working a dog. So I was, I, t- I lied to Renard. Renard said, like, you know how to work a dog? I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I can work a dog. I can work a dog. He said, all right, I'll let you run Polo and I'll run Pete. I need to run Pete because he's he fresh. He said, all right. So we sitting in there. Daylight comes. Two wood that's going to scream me through there. Boom, boom, boom. She went on, she won. Of course, I miss. All right. Next one, come in. Boom, 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 boom. I shoot one. Here come Pete. Screaming through them. Oh, okay, I like Pete. Polo just sitting there looking at me like he, like he just dumb. It's like, all right. I, I, I kind of, I, I get with this. I can get with this. I can go. So then we killed like three, four ducks. You know, we, back then, three, four ducks, you know. Big day. It was a big day. <laughs> so then we leave. We riding around. We're like, so I'm hanging out with Renard. I was like, this is the first time we ever, you know, met. In person, you know, yeah. talked on social media. She's like, all right, we're going to, you know, ride around, get to know each other. So we rode around, what, making one Robbins for a minute. Yeah. You know, when it ate, just riding, you know, then they burn a whole tank of gas. He's like, man, we need to hunt in the morning. It's like, all right, so we're going to go in the morning. So we go down, and he's like, I got another spot. We got, it's in the bottom, you know, in this duck hole. It's, you know, pretty steep drop off. I was like, all right. Man, we walked down that hill, dude. Boy. It's like, no way. He's like, what you mean? He's like, bro, we're going to have to have a rope to get up. He's like, I, I got a rope in the back of the truck. Bro, this rope was literally, bro, long. He's like, all right. So we tied it to a tree, anchored ourselves all the way down, got down there. And, bro, that morning when we got there, when I tell you there had to be three, four hundred ducks rolling in there and only two guns shooting. And that's a lot of ducks for for wood, <laughs> wood duck hole in Georgia. Like, So this this hole, this little swamp hole was just, it was untouched. And it was just hard to get to. I couldn't get nobody to go. And that was perfect time for me and I already link up. And, yeah. uh, man, we had a great hunt. We shot our limit real quick. and Just watched Dutch roll in. Was Dutch this before just, the Onyx days? Yeah, oh, it was wait. way before Onyx. It was like... I, I think we were still using MapQuest. I don't even know what I was using. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's how we kind of hooked okay. up right there. That's mm-hmm. where Arby come from. Yeah, I man. I met him on a quail hunt. Um, How'd y'all meet? How'd you and Daryl meet? I met him on Instagram. I met Daryl Moore on Instagram. D more twenty three. I was in Arkansas at a military school, and I was like, "That weekend, I'm going to kill ducks with Dow." And we went to some place in in Arkansas. Don't remember the name of it. It was a parking walk. We got there, got lost, got beat to the hole, killed three ducks. <laughs> it was snowing. I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this." Um, went down to Max Pair of Wings, and it's just like, bro, everything you always hear about, if you just do it. And I start realizing you can just do it if you just go. Gotta, gotta go. be fearless and go. Gotta but go. That's pretty much the backstory on on who everybody is and where we come from and how we connected. Um, you know, for me with Blood Deep Outdoors, my vision was just, hey, get out there, tell your story, and get kids into the outdoors. That was kind of my journey. Um, Daryl had was it River Bottom Outdoors? Um, they had the hardest hats on the Mississippi Flyway. You know, I, that was that was his deep roots with that. What was your vision whenever you was gonna pop twenty four seven hunt up? Uh, my first vision was just to film stuff. Like I always like looking at my dad's old photos and stuff. Yeah. So it was like more about filming and just getting stuff on camera that I could look back on with with my dad and his buddies and his, my uncles and stuff like that. And uh, by the time I pulled the trigger on it, they got to a place where I mean they were just getting older, wasn't hunting enough, and yeah. I my my passion and just urge to hunt just kept growing. And I wanted more and more and more. So uh, that's when I when I met you guys. It kind of it, all that was in play. So um, you know, I met Jason and liked his work. Jason we, is Vita Vita Media. Yeah, make sure y'all follow Vita Media. He yep. does all of our 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 work and content stuff. So I met him and it fell in place. And the vision kind of changed on its own. You know what I'm saying? Um, after we did a first hunt with y'all, uh, it just it just it just changed on its own, and uh, you know definitely thankful for that. Um, just going with the flow. So, but yeah, at first I just wanted to film my family, and uh, have something to look back on. Yeah. Well, you definitely knocked that out, big dog. We got yeah. a lot of yeah, we got a lot of, of stuff to look back on when we get about seventy eight years old. <laughs> we get about well, I ain't gonna say it. Yeah. Yeah. We're right now we're up north hunting a little bit. This is our first time really just all together hunting in fields and. We've been seeing some sites that you don't really see down south as far as bird numbers and stuff like that. But I will say, I don't know, I'm I just interested to see what you, you know, what y'all think about this compared to the timber down there. Like what you think? What you think, Daryl? Like, is it I mean, we've seen some sites. I know you love the timber. It ain't nothing compared to the timber. It ain't though. nothing compared to timber, but like 
how does it compare? How does it – where does it weigh up against the timber? I mean, it's second best, but ain't nothing like watching them break the trees. Yeah. On a good day. What's the third best? There is no third. So, you know what I think, bro? I used to think, like, timber was it. I, try, I, I like hunting. What? I think I like oxbows. No. In the woods, like no, like lakes in the woods. I, I like oxbows. I never thought I would like a lake in the woods. It's like the lighting is different. I like oxbows. One thing I do want to do is it, Daryl talk about it all the time. I, I want to do that. I think that skinny water is gonna be my number one if I ever get the experience. That's what I do want to do. Skinny water timber. No, no like just skinny smooth. water, like, like some really? water's this table right here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I want to yeah, hunt yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That that's going. I want to come in there and sit down. Yeah. yeah. I don't know much about that. Y'all think is that more? I don't. Is that more like situational, or can you go to a place like that and kill them all the time? I think it's situational. Yeah, I, I mean, you gotta be cold. I feel like I can't speak fully on it, but I think it's situational with, like you said, cold weather and moving water. Yeah, and I think that those skinny spots are moving water, and yeah. I think that's. I, mean, I seen ducks today, and there was twenty foot water inside of a lake, and those ducks were just kind of hanging out in that. Some half of them were hanging out on the uh, the ice shelf. Yeah, the rest of them were kind of hanging out right there. But I think skinny water would be good, man. Um, now, Ricky, I, you experienced something crazy last year on that veteran youth hunt. You went on. You caught the weather. Like, you know. Arkansas was You caught frozen, one of those bro. weather systems that you just don't catch every year. Arkansas was frozen, and it was frozen for a few days. And we dropped down into the river, bro, and all of the woods were locked up. The ponds were locked up. Um, oxbows were locked up. And the ducks were all in the river. I drove the river 13 miles that morning, and every foot of that mile, I can see ducks from left to right just getting up as I was rolling through the river. That was surreal, man. Um, we ended up hunting a channel going into a lake because that was the only really moving water in that area. So I was pretty crazy about that. But talking field hunting, man, I like the comforts of, of field hunting. I'm afraid that that might pull the cooking out of me because... <coughs> You can just go to the gas station or go order a pizza. Yeah. You know, yeah. Whereas the timber, like, hey, you know what I'm gonna get next year? And we gonna get, I'm gonna get a. Uh, we gonna have about seventy one hand warmers in this, <laughs> in this. So I'm gonna get one of them Papa John's pizza delivery things. And we're gonna keep them pizzas warm <laughs> <laughs> while we hunting in that. Not warm. the hand warmers. Yeah, we put them hand warmers, them big ones too. Matter of fact, the, I can't the, tell y'all too much about them big ones. Y'all yeah. don't buy we them got, out. We got a little secret cooked up for y'all. Gotta have that Tom Brady. Got to have the Tom Brady. If you ain't got the Tom Brady, then you ain't got nothing. You know what? Let's just put it out there. You know, uh, this, uh, what's the official name of this thing? Mm, You know, to be honest. We call it the QB Tom Brady hand sack. The sicker hand warmer. Uh, Man, you put that thing around your waist with about six big hand warmers, you don't need gloves. They, I mean, you definitely get that. I'll put that on your list. Please, right now. I was saying that Gator was number one. No, this is under thirty degrees. That one, bro. That no. one is. Nick Gator got to be. You still got to have Nick Gator. Because I can replace the Nick Gator. I can be. Yeah, I, I can, can be, my hands anywhere. Bro. Right, that right. Nick Gator, You can't replace that yeah. Nick Gator. You got Nick Gator. You you ain't you ain't as comfortable. Nah, bro. I think that's that's tight, bro. Like, like no. Past few have days. Have you ever stopped to hunt because of a cold neck? Uh-huh. Yeah, my lips be hurt so bad. No, like, man, never, I gotta go. No, never, never, I, never I stopped, stopped the hunt because I got cold, cold hands. That's because uh, neither, that's cause neither absolutely of y'all be calling. Stopped yeah. up the hunt but my hands, of a, a frozen digit. My hands would be so cold sometimes. That's the first thing that get cold in my body is my hands. But my you, hands. But you can stick your hands in the jacket. But that, but this is to defeat the purpose of this Tom Brady. Yeah, y'all ready for me to get y'all the official name of this? Yeah, what's the official name? This is the Sitka Men's Hudson Muff. Hudson Muff, yep. aka the Tom Brady, the Tom Brady, the, Tom Tom Brady. Brady, the QB, dog. the QB. Pal. Have you ever so, so have, have you ever seen Tom Brady play a game without the sick of Muff? Never. Well, not, 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 not the not sick of Muff. Not a home game, but not the maybe Muff. maybe she's got Tim Bay because it ain't cold. But mm-hmm. no, so, that t- New England that's a Tom, part Brady, of his Tom Brady was yeah. He, that's, that's I always a, wonder how he performed so well, but this is it. This yeah. makes him the good. I know he had about four hand warmers in there and too. That's it. Had, I know he did. Hundred percent. Absolutely. This makes him the good. Yeah. And so uh, we just took a little page out of that book, and now we all got one clipping on our waist. And uh, I don't know about these boys, but I ain't going. I ain't going in the woods without it. Can't. So we got a lot of questions, or we get a lot of questions, and people, you know, they they don't know like the details. And really, the more you hunt, the more you figure things out, man. Like, don't get this thing, and then go throw your decoys out. You're gonna come back. It might be wet. You got to know when to pull this thing out, when to disconnect. Yeah. When to reconnect. Um, same with your gloves. 
And it, it, I feel like with all of the questions we get about gear and all of that, it's like no set guaranteed one answer. It's all situational, bro. So you just got to go. So let's put it like this. This situation, it being, we'll say, 20 degrees outside. 20 degrees? 20 degrees. Uh-huh. 15 mile hour wind. Uh-huh. Oof. That's rough. What is going to be a third best item of sticker that you'll need? All right, so number one would be... Me. What, number one would be. You can't we, ask Daryl. He gonna put fifty nine <laughs> duck ovens on. <laughs> Think, if y'all have not noticed that Daryl, if you ever see any picture Daryl posted, Daryl gonna have at least six jackets on. I'm not gonna be cold. <laughs> and, and if you seen the last episode, Daryl had my duck oven on. He had two duck ovens. But on. you told us, me and Renard, we're trying to get you a jacket. You said, I don't need all them jackets. I ain't gonna be cold. Yeah, yeah that's that's Albert, man. He swear he ain't cold. Then we get out okay. there, he get cold. Okay, I'll okay. say he cold because okay. he ain't got no. I was clothes a little on. chilly. I was a little chilly. All right, back to my question. Duck oven. But twenty mile, twenty twenty degrees, twenty 30 degrees, mile wind or something like 15 that. Fifteen mile hour wind, negative ten. No, I say sorry. But that's not two, a fair question. That's too many elements. No, there's no all right. not there's not a third piece. All right, it has to be, bro. You negative number one, Tom Brady number two. When so, you say fifteen mile hour wind, 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 twenty degrees, I gotta have wind cutter. Yeah, wind, wind, I say wind is a whole other factor now. Yeah. Yep. You just say cold. All right, all right, we'll put it like this. It's okay, third we'll meet, we'll meet 10 degrees. Just 10 degrees? 10 degrees, that's right. Duck no win. Duck no up. win. Duck up. Definitely duck up. Well, I'm, I'm duck oven every hunt. I ain't too, going so in the woods. Even You've been that. duck oven for yeah. three years. I've been told preaching nobody. that duck oven. You ain't told me. I, I've been. I've been. I seen it. I've been wearing it. Hey, some things go unspoken. All right, duck oven. You see a smart man putting something on every time. That means it worked. It took me a little while to figure out who was smart in the click, man. Hey. Got the duck oven, then it's the Hudson. Systems is a whole different conversation, and it's not like one piece. If you got to say what what's the one piece you want or or will mess up your hunt if you don't have it, and then there's the question that you asked about you know outfit and all the way. All right. So what qu- so what piece of equipment? Right, Dude, this is the same thing that happened on the internet. It's situational. I got to ask a question. Do you have a long walk, or do you not have a long walk? If you don't have a long walk, go heavy on the legs. If you got a long walk, so don't don't put them silks. Don't put the 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 pants the core lightweight uh pant none of that <clears throat> I don't care well, I'm putting everything yeah I'm I'm putting I'm not I got I know, that. Hey. I, know, I know what time it is when we stop walking and I'm about an hour into that cool down yeah that's when you get chilly and then when that sun come up and that little breeze hits so you. I don't sweat when I go in because I go in light if I know I got a walk over 400 yards I'm going in there pretty much with a core lightweight hoodie or uh out all this year I wore a lot what was that that jacket called um, the ambient hoodie. Yeah, with the active primolo, I wore that a lot this year as my exterior piece on, on my commute in. If it was a walk, boat ride, you got to have a a delta weight coat. Anyway, we're gonna say that for a whole other podcast because that right there, bro, is touch like, a little subject. No, it it requires a lot of conversation because you got to like include your question with how that hunt's lined up. Yeah, so. I mean, I literally sat in the truck for a little while on yesterday's hunt. You know what I'm saying? That changes things. So, I'll tell you what, though. One of the craziest things about this trip was running out of ammo. We weren't able to fly with all our ammo. Yeah. And we ran out of Apex probably three days in. Yeah. Dude, when I put the shells that I had to go buy from the store in my gun, I felt like I was shooting uh, packets of salt, bro. <laughs> I felt like I just I lost all yeah, confidence. That, that fly salt gun? Bro, I'm telling you, I lost all confidence in my shots, and I, I, I just didn't know how I went so many years shooting some light stuff and really felt good about the situation. But. Yeah. I will say that, man. You know, if you're an avid duck hunter, you know, of course you got those people that, you know, you don't need this to hunt, you don't need that to hunt. But, man, if you hunt a lot, man, make sure you spend the, the money on some, you know, good equipment that you that you can rely on. You know what I'm saying? That you owe yeah. it to yourself and the birds. You spend the money to hunt. So you owe it to yourself to have some stuff that you can rely on. So that's why we shoot Apex. Um, man, you just can rely on that shell, and that's just the bottom line. It's a great shell. You can rely on it, and it's going to do the job every time. Man. And it's made by some great people, a great company. And uh, I couldn't say I couldn't speak more much about it. Like, definitely get it or check it out. And, um, yeah, you owe it to yourself. For the guys who say it's expensive, <clears throat> Podcast one of one of one was us talking about duck season don't start when the first cold front hit. Like we started duck accounts, or I started a duck account when I first got into it. I started buying shells in February, 
on clearance. Yeah. You, know, you go to Max, you get the <clears> stuff on clearance. So you start building up your stuff before the season even come, like right toward the end. That's where you really make a come up. Yeah. Um, I saw Sika had crazy sales a couple weeks after Christmas. Man, that's where you, you make it happen. Plan and preparation. It's a know. hard lick when you're trying to do that 20 days before the season. season yeah. And get a license and an out-of-state license and put gas or diesel in the truck. Yeah. Um, but that's something that we're going to dive in on, on some secondary episodes as well. But basically what I wanted today to be was just to answer the question to all of the new followers that are out there, um, who we are, where we come from, um, what's the vision of 24-7 Hunt, and pretty much give them an insight on what they could expect from this team, this brand, this family, um, this culture, the whole nine yards. So what's in the sights for 24-7 from your perspective? Uh, I mean, you got to how, how, you know, what time are you speaking on? Cause I got I got a short vision I got long vision. Let's hear it, big dog. We're gonna we're gonna shut it down with that. Uh, let's see, long vision or you want to go short first? Let's go short. Short vision. Yeah, between now and March. Now March, man, we got a lot of things coming. We got some stuff coming with uh, some new products. I want to say products. You new say items. Products. <laughs> merch. New merch. You know what I'm saying? Uh. Just a lot of cool little neat projects we're going we're gonna to tackle. So please be on the lookout for that. Um, you know, we've got a big turkey season coming up. So make sure y'all tune in for that. Turkey season going to go crazy. Yeah, for sure. Long term, man. We're going to try to grow this brand. We're going to see We're gonna see how big we can get this brand. Uh, it's been crazy. You know, we set goals and we kill them. And so some of these goals seem, you know, unreachable. By like by the tongue, but you know once you once you lay it out and really go for it, you know we've had a I, I would say a hundred percent success success rate, you know completing these goals. No and doubt. So, uh, man, my next goal for us all is just getting this brand to a point where, you know, it changes our families' lives and stuff like that. And I'm gonna just go ahead and put that in the universe. And so uh, we're gonna shoot for it. I know I am. So. I was asked this, you know, and I get a lot of questions. So what is the best way, you know, people are, are late, you know, seeing these hats drop or seeing these shirts and hoodies, you know, drop. What is the best way for people to get these items without feeling like they are left behind or, or can't get something or they feel like it's going to get sold out too quick? Man, you just got to pay attention. You know, we kind of run things off of uh, limited quanti- quantity. You know, we don't want to oversaturate, but we still we – still bring the heat when it comes to how much we do order. Uh, we just change up. You know, we don't run as much of the same colorways and patterns. You know what I'm saying? We don't run it into the ground. So I would just stay in tune with, you know, our website, you know, all of our Instagrams. Um, and, yeah, when we drop stuff, man, just just jump on it if you really want it. <clears throat> uh, we kind of somehow, you know, Catered to the hype beast culture, and so um, the hats are kind of a hot commodity right now. And uh, man, we're 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 trying to get as many out as we can. You know what I mean? We're still fl- we're still learning. We're still trying to figure out how to juggle cash flow and stuff like that. And also, you know, keep the brand where nothing's watered down. And um, so yeah, man, when they when they come out, they get gone. But we'll always have something something available. So man, make sure y'all just stay tuned with that, and just just keep an ear to the Ear to the streets, so to speak. And also follow at 24.7 Hunt and yep. 247.Hunt Co. And hit the actual following button. The actual, was it notification, I think? You yeah, did? you can subscribe to it. We yeah. usually give a warning before we drop something. Yeah. We'll, we'll give a little warning. And then when it's coming, it's coming. So Because when it comes, it comes. It's coming. And them hats going to be so quick. They will, yeah. man. They will. They go. So that's it in hot case at McDonald's. So we appreciate all y'all for... Uh, you know, if you do have merch, we appreciate you buying it, supporting us, um, supporting the brand. We definitely appreciate it. And we just try to get, you know, we want the quality quality to, of the of the of the stuff to be better and better. So that's what we're working on too. Um, you know, we want y'all when y'all buy something, have it for a long time. So we getting better, and uh, it's because of y'all. Yep, it's love, man. <laughs> Vibes. For sure. So, <clears throat> man, I think that was a good talk. Uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. We want to thank everybody who made this podcast happen, and we see y'all next time. Beep, beep, beep.
We out. We out. Bob out.